Hello, I'm Doug Meyer, or Spike with Rotor Chopper. Today we're going to be talking about belt tension on, the, on your Rotor Chopper equipment. We're going to be using a B66 for the example today. Well, this will apply to basically all of our grinding equipment, so you should be able to use it across any machine you're using. As with any time you're doing maintenance on the machine, you always want to make sure that it is properly locked out and tagged out before you perform any operations on the machine. You also want to wear the pr proper PPE for any particular job you're doing. Today for the tools we're going to need, we're going to need a wrench set, we're going to need some socket sets uh, to, to move the smaller shields, and then also a string to check the alignment when we're done tensioning the drive belt. So on this particular machine, this is an eight band belt on here. So this is a, a heavier than a lot of the other uh, smaller machines we have, but the belt tension still basically works the same way. Uh, one way to check it is to, in the manual, there's, it's specified the amount of pressure you have to push down on the belt and the amount of deflection. So in the manual, they're gonna talk about putting so many foot-pounds on the belt and you're gonna push that across all the bands of the belt and how much deflection you see. So when we do that, we wanna be in the center of the belt. You can be on the bottom or on the top, it doesn't matter. But you're basically gonna push down with a certain amount of force and the amount of deflection that you see, that's how you know if the belt is tight or not. And so one other thing to talk about is, is how often do you tension the drive belt? The, the, one of the most important things is if the belt is slipping, if you're grinding and you hear the belt squeal or you see any smoke coming out of the belt shields, you definitely want to shut down and check and see what's going on. The belt tension intervals are normally about 250 hours. So if you change engine oil, it's a good time to check your drive belt. A very important thing to note is that to check this drive belt tension in the first 25 hours of the machine operation. These are Kevlar belts, they do, uh, they do stretch in a little bit and it's very important to do that at the beginning of the machine's life. Uh, if you replace a drive belt, at, let's say you're at 5,000 hours and you install a new drive belt, you wanna make sure after you've installed that and properly tensioned it, that you go back in the next 25 hours and check that again. It's very important to do that in the beginning. Otherwise, every 250 hours after that, it's just fine to check the belt tension. So to check the tension on the dry belt, this is a B66. This is an 8B belt on here, so this is one of our heavier, heavier belts. Uh, a good way to check it is just to push on this as hard as you can. The, we want to see if we can try and roll that over. Um, it doesn't matter the size of the person. If you can move this over quite easily, the belt isn't tight enough. A basic rule of thumb for this, if, if you think that the belt should be tightened, tighten it. When we get to the tensioning part, you'll be able to see what we're doing there as far as how tight we're tightening that. But basically as tight as we can get this drive belt is, is what we're shooting for. On this particular model, it's a B66. On an FP model, it's gonna be the same thing. You're gonna have a shield behind here that's aligning around that, that shaft. Before we start, we have to loosen the four bolts that you see here, and we'll loosen those so that shield can move as the pulley is moving back and forth, because we're gonna move this pulley forward or back if we're taking the belt off or if we're installing a new belt. We've checked our drive belt tension and we've determined that we need to tension the drive belt. Is we're going to loosen the four bolts so that I can access the, the motor mount bolts right here and right here. And it's going to be the same thing on the other side. But before we start, we want to loosen this, the back side of it. And we'll actually open that up and we're going to put some anti-seize on those threads before we tighten that down. You want to do the same thing on the inside. We want to have those lubricated when we're moving those. Another thing to keep in mind is that when we're tightening the drive belt, we're moving the motor back towards the discharge. If we want to loosen the drive, the drive belt in order to, say, change it, we're actually going to push the motor forward. So when we're doing that, we're going to alternate between this tensioner rod, the other side tensioner rod, and then also the ratchet jack up on top of the machine. What I like to do is when I'm tensioning this and you get everything aligned, what you can do is you can actually count the number of flats that you're turning the bolt. So if I do three flats on this side, I can go to the other side and do three flats. That way I know I keep my, I'm keeping the motor aligned. So now that we've loosened the motor bolts and we're allowing now, we can basically move the engine. We're gonna use this ratchet jack here to help move the engine. So in combination of using the tensioner rods down in the bottom, we're also gonna be using this ratchet jack to help us move the engine forward and back. And now we're gonna kind of show you how an electric machine works. This is an electric B66. So in order to tension the belt on this particular machine, we're going to loosen the bolts that are holding down the motor. There's going to be two on the back, two on the front. And then we're gonna loosen the jam nuts on each one of the tensioner rods. There's one on each side. Once I have those loose, 
I'll use the tensioner here to put the proper amount of tension. I'm going to pull on that as hard as I can. There's also a push jack on the front of the motor that we'll use to help push this motor back. But again, when we're done, we're going to be pushing, pulling on that bolt as hard as we can. So one thing to keep in mind, when you're tensioning the belt, and when you get done and you, you have everything aligned and you're, you, you're doing your final pulls on these bolts, basically we're going to pull on these tensioner rods as hard as we can. We're using a standard wrench, not putting a cheater pipe on there. But basically when we go on in and we start pushing, it's going to be about as hard as you can push on both sides to make sure that that belt is as tight as we can possibly get it. My belt is properly tensioned and I have my, uh, my tensioner rods are locked down. The next thing we're going to do is we have to tighten these motor mount bolts again. We'll do that on both sides. Once we've tightened that down, we want to again check our alignment to make sure nothing moved on that side. And after that, we should be, should be good. So now that we've properly uh, tensioned the drive belt, we have to tighten this shield back up again to make sure that that's not moving around. It's, very, it's pretty tight to see it from here, but you're actually gonna move the shield back and forth and you'll feel it hit the shaft. And we wanna center that shield on the shaft. Once that's complete, you'll tighten the four bolts and then we're done. And remember, a well-maintained machine is a safer, more profitable machine. Thanks for watching the video today. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and all our other platforms.